Hello and thank you for watching my video. My name is Astrid Krasnici. I'm CCNA and CCMP certified instructor. On this video, we are covering CCNA semester two, routing and switching essentials, and it's chapter three, VLANs. Chapter three is divided in three sections. We have section 3.1, VLAN segmentation, then section 3.2, VLAN implementation, and section 3.3, VLAN security and design. This is section 3.1, VLAN segmentation. Upon completion of this section, you should be able to explain the purpose of VLAN in a switch network and analyze how a switch forwards frames based on the VLAN configuration in multi-switched environment. So VLAN definition. What is VLAN? Stands for Virtual Local Area Network. This is a great definition of VLAN. So a VLAN is a virtual local area network that logically segments switch networks based on the function, project teams or application of the organization regardless of the physical location or connection to the network. So this is a definition of VLAN. What are we doing with VLANs is we are segmenting our networks into either uh, based on the function, for example uh, we have a VLAN for sales team, VLAN for marketing team, uh, project different project teams or an application or for example we have a VLANs for different group of for voice voice VLANs and so on remember how to clear the switch because when we start configuring the switch if we want to factory reset uh, and erase all the delete the VLANs and erase the configuration we need to do this first delete VLAN dot that what are we doing here we are erasing any VLAN old configuration any database of the VLAN. So the command is delete VLAN.dat. Delete file name and it tells uh, you sure you want to you want to delete the VLAN database? Yes, you press enter and it will start deleting. If it gives you error saying oh I can't, we couldn't find the VLAN.database, it just means that there was no VLAN there. You can just still continue. And then say erase startup configuration. So this is like in the router, we are erasing the startup config. Confirm and then we reload and the router should, or the switch in this case, it will reload to the factory reset with no configuration and no VLAN database. A default, by default, all the ports are in the same VLAN uh, subnet. So if we do, sh if we go to the switch and type in the global, uh, sorry, uh, privilege mode, we type show VLANs, we can see all the ports of the switch belongs to VLAN 1. That's a default VLAN. And all the ports are active, and you can see that we have 24 fast Ethernet ports and 2 gigabit Ethernet ports. If we have like this, all the ports are in the same, uh, same VLAN, and they, ha they are have IP addresses for PCA, B, C, and D. As you can see, the IP address 192.168.10.10 for PCA, 10.11, B, 10.12, C, and 10.13. Subnet mask, you can see the subnet mask, and we can tell the network they are sharing is the same one, 192.168.10 for all of them. That's in darker blue. Ports can communicate with each other because they are in the same subnet. So 192.168.10, they are all in the same subnet. And they belong to the same VLAN. So if they belong to the same VLAN, same subnet, they should be able to communicate. The question here is, can A, B, C, and D ping each other? Well, yeah, configuration, they should be able to ping each other because they all got the same uh, network ID 192.168.10 and they are in the same VLAN so they should be able to ping. If A, PCA, did send an ARP request for PCB, ARP request is a broadcast so saying okay what is the MAC address of 192.168.10.11 who would see this Ethernet broadcast? Because they are in the same VLAN everybody would see it so when PCA sends a broadcast message everybody all the devices will see it that's one more reason why we create the vlans we reduce the broadcast domain so we don't have all the pcs on the same broadcast a vlan is a logical partition of layer 2 network multiple partition can be created allowing for multiple vlans to coexist so for example it's a logical partition on this switch so i can go and create as many vlans as i want in this case we have two we have one red vlan and one blue VLAN, that's blue and the red on this side, and that port belongs to the blue VLAN as you can see, and that port belongs to the red VLAN. But it, well, I'm not confined to only two VLANs, I can make as many VLANs as, uh, as I want. Well, not as many as you want, but there's, there's a few more that you can create. 
HVLAN is a broadcast domain, usually with its own IP address network. VLANs are mutually isolated and packets can only pass between them via a router or a layer 3 device. So the packets from this VLAN, from the blue VLAN, cannot go to the red VLAN at layer 2. So if you want packets to be sent from blue VLAN to the red VLAN, you need to go through layer 3 device, like a router or layer 3 switch. The partition of layer 2 network takes place inside the layer 2 device, usually via a switch. The hosts grouped within a VLAN are unaware of the VLAN existence. So for example, if I connect the hosts there and they are part of the blue VLAN, the hosts have got no idea what VLANs they belong. They just know, okay, well I can see these hosts here, these 12 hosts, and that's it. Any others, I have to go through layer 3 device. The VLANs are configured on the switch port, so you have to access the switch port and configure a VLAN. So we're going to create some VLANs for uh, VLAN 10, these ports on VLAN 10, and then we're going to create VLAN 20 and put these ports on VLAN 20. IP address and subnet mask are configured on the device that connects to the switch port. A VLAN on the switch must match an IP address on the device. So for example, we have IP addresses 192.168.10.10. Uh, so 192.168.10 network and 192.168.20 network. So the blue network 192.168.10 and the red 192.168.20. So PCA and PCB will be able to communicate with each other now. If PCA sends a broadcast message, only PCB will receive it. PCC and D are totally different network now. So they will not be able to talk to each other without help of layer 3 device like a router. Now. Can you, can you go do this separation without actually creating the VLANs? At layer 3, yes. We can give an IP address, different subnet, 192.168.10 and 192.168.20 for those two PCs, and they will be able to communicate with each other for layer 3. But as far as layer 2 is concerned, if PCA sends a broadcast and we don't have a VLAN, they're all in the same VLAN, then the other two, they will hear that broadcast as well because they are in the same VLAN. So if you want to stop the broadcast messages, then you create the VLANs, different virtual local area network. Now, each VLAN will have its own IP address as well, its own subnet. So before we do any configuration, if I go to the switch and do show VLAN, then like we saw early, all the ports they will be on the VLAN 1. That's our default VLAN and it's active VLAN. Creating static user VLANs. First you go configure terminal, in the global configuration mode, you type VLAN 10, or whatever number that you, you want to create, and then you go in the VLAN configuration mode, yeah? So if you see here, here, VLAN configuration mode. And in there, you can type a name. So give it like a name to identify what VLAN 10 is. So name, we have HR. This is optional. And then we have to go to the physical port. Interface fast Ethernet 02, for example, we access in this port. And then we say switch port mode access, first command. We tell them that we tell the switch that at the end of this port, it's connected, the device is going to be connected to it, it's end device. It's never going to be a switch, so we know that we don't need to do the trunking, which we're going to talk later in an upcoming video. After we told it we, this port is an access port, it can be two modes. It can either be an access port or it can be a trunk port. But all end devices we connected, they are going to be an access port. If we connect switch to another switch, that's going to be a trunk port. So, and then we tell what VLAN is going to access. So switch port access VLAN 10. So VLAN, now this port is going to be moved from VLAN 1, which is default. And the Cisco recommends that you should be moving all the ports, all the ports from VLAN 1. VLAN 1 shouldn't have any, any ports assigned to it. Anyway, that's again later we're going to see in security. But VLAN 10, we created there, give, we gave it a name, and we went to the port and said, this port is an access port, so it's PC connected to it in the end, and then we have a, we assign it to VLAN 10. Now, if you do assign an interface to VLAN, and say that we didn't create this VLAN 10, if I can just point here, if we don't create a VLAN 10, then that, that the switch will create a VLAN 10 for you, automatically. Note, dynamic VLANs can be configured using a special server called the VLAN Membership Policy Server, VMPS, but VMPS is not covered on, on Cisco, CCNA routine switching. Instead of doing one by one, 
you go to each board and then configure the VLAN. We can do it in the range, yeah? So go to configure interface range, fastly to 01 dash 10. So what we do, we select all the 10 ports. And then we say in the switchboard mode access, making sure that they are going to be an access port instead of chunk port. So we tell the switch, okay, well, I got the PCs connected at the end of it, or servers and devices anyway. Then we say to access VLAN 10. So switchboard access VLAN 10. Then exit. Then we can go to the gigabit Ethernet port, interface G, G0 forward slash 1. Same thing, switchboard mode access, switchboard access VLAN 10. And we do end. We could have done in the same, we didn't have to do like this, we could have done this way, yeah. So it came at the end of this, you put a space, then comma, then another space, and then you can put G G zero, sorry for writing it so terribly. G zero one. You can put like space, comma, space, and then G zero one. You don't have to do it another line like this, like we have it here. But anyway. So we're gonna do VLAN 20 now. So first thing is we create a VLAN, VLAN 20, and then give it a name, sales, exit. And then we do an interface range, fast Ethernet 13 to 22. We're telling them that it's an access port. This is the first command. And then we are gonna assign them to VLAN 20. Exit. And then again, we're doing it for G02 interface, switchboard mode access, and switchboard access VLAN 20. Okay, that's it, we create it. So to verify this, what we do is show VLAN. Show VLAN, and that's gonna show us, okay, well, port 10, oh sorry, VLAN 10 now is active, and these are the ports on VLAN 10. So from one till 12, and then G01 as well, and then from 13 to 24, and G02. Okay, in the, in the other slides, I don't think we did 12. So we did 1 to 10, yeah, but anyway, this is coming from another slides. So uh, 1 and 12 wasn't configured, but it was actually configured on different slides. VLANs do not have to be configured contiguously on the switch. So for example, the ports, they don't have to be, okay, one, port 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 in VLAN 10, 7, 8, 9, 10, VLAN 20 and so on. You can say, okay, port 1, this is on, on um, say, uh, VLAN 10, right, this port. The next port, right next to it, port 1, that's port FA01, that's port FA02. The FA02, you can say, okay, well, this is this is VLAN 20, for example. So they don't have to be too contiguously. So you can just say, okay, uh, with the range as well, the commands you can configure it with the range, but they don't have to be one after another. You can use the comma, as I showed you. VLANs, segment switches into different VLANs or subnets. It's like having two switches, yeah? So think of like having separate switches, who can ping? Who can A ping? B, C, and D. Who can they pick? Obviously, they can ping only on the PCs that are co connected to local LAN. Uh, if they want to ping another PC, if the, uh, the packet they will go from here to here, you need a layer three device. Yeah. If A did an ARP request, who would see this Ethernet broadcast? So in only B, uh, only B. If C did the ARP request, who will see it? Only D. If A did the ARP request for B, who would see this Ethernet broadcast? Well, because they are in the same VLAN, VLAN 10, then only B will see it. C and D are not, not going to hear that broadcast. If C did an ARP request for D, who would see this Ethernet broadcast? Well, only C, only D. A and B is not going to see it. You remember ARP, yeah? Address Resolution Protocol, is when you're trying to resolve an IP address to a MAC address. ARP is a broadcast message, so we send an ARP saying, okay, who's got, if A is ARPing for B, it's saying, okay, who's got an IP address 192.168.10.11, tell, tell me. And then B will say, okay, well, that's me, and turn around and gives him his own MAC address. Benefits of VLANs, security. Well, that's the main advantage why we created VLANs is to separate. So the users, for example, if the sales users won't be able to access, uh, I don't know, financial users, um, sort of, user from sales PC will not be able to access the folders or shares from the financial PC without going through a layer 3 device. So improved by isolating user access to sensitive data in application. Cost reduction, so we don't need to purchase extra hardware for to create a different separate RP NANs. Smaller broadcast domain, divide the network into smaller logical networks, so less uh, broadcast domain broadcast in the in the network. 
so we're probably going to have less broadcast on better performance divides the, the flat layer 2 network into multiple broadcast domains reducing unnecessary traffic on the network and boost performance yeah because if we send the broadcast message that means that everybody's going to get it so if one pc is generating broadcast message and everybody is in the same vlan everybody will get it even your your mobile phones ip cameras ip phones uh, video uh, access point everything is going to get it so for that reason it's better performance if we separate the devices on different vlan so they're not going to get those those broadcast messages and improved it staff efficiency efficiency which makes the network easier to manage thank you very much for watching this section 3.1 vlan segmentation please have a look at my other videos and don't forget to subscribe this has been Astrid Krasnitsky. Please have a look at the next video, 3.2 VLAN implementation. Bye-bye.